We are Georgia and David. In March of 2022, we quit our jobs to travel the world full time. We are currently exploring Mexico and our goal is to visit 100 Pueblos Mágicos. Welcome to the picturesque Pueblo Mágico of Orizaba. We're gonna be spending the next week here and in this video, we'll show you the coolest things we saw, the best things we ate. And if you stay tuned to the end, we'll give you a tour of our Airbnb and a detailed breakdown of our expenses. So today's first order of business was to check out the river walk, which has a bunch of animal enclosures on the sides. Yeah, there are signs saying that uh, most of the animals on display were rescued from either circuses or private homes, or they were just wandering into towns when they shouldn't have been. Um, I think one of the coolest was to see all the jaguars. They yeah. had quite a few of them on display. They also had lions. Um, really neat. Uh, we've still got a couple more uh, enclosures to check out, and then maybe we'll grab some breakfast. We finished up our delicious brunch at Super Tortas Orizabenas. Uh, we absolutely loved the sandwiches there. The bread was like homemade, mm -hmm. and then they fresh sliced like this leg of pork, and it had tomato, and then they put a giant stack of homemade potato chips. And then there were all these pickled condiments you could put on it. So there were very, very spicy peppers, kind of spicy peppers, mm -hmm. a couple of salsas, um, and some pickled onions. Super delicious, and our waiter was super friendly. And the cutest thing is they have this little mascot, uh, and I think it is just adorable. So uh, we'll probably be back here again because the price was also extremely affordable. The only thing is you might have to unhinge your jaw to take the first couple bites. Yeah, huge sandwich. <laughs> This is one of the most famous buildings in Orizaba, the Palacio de Hierro. Uh, this building was actually designed by uh, Eiffel, the same guy who designed the Eiffel Tower. And the building was actually built in Belgium, then disassembled and then reassembled here over the course of two years. Uh, the structure is absolutely gorgeous and it now houses, I think, like eight museums. So we're going to go in and check it out. So we just went into the souvenir shop and we bought our ticket for the museums. It actually includes 13 different museums and it's only 50 pesos each. The first three museums were upstairs and included the Roots of Orizaba, which was a small archaeological museum, the Rodolfo Neri Vela Museum, dedicated to the first Mexican in space, and our favorite, the Interactive Science Museum.
Downstairs was the football or soccer museum and the Cerveza Museum. Our next stop was the House of Legends of Orizaba, which has plaques telling local tales completely in Spanish. They also have displays depicting scenes from the legends. Just finish up the Museo de Arte Popular. And right next door is an Artesanea market, so we're gonna go check it out. It looks beautifully decorated. After walking through the main square, we continued on to another smaller square with a beautiful church before heading on to more museums. There are 13 museums on that ticket, but after nine, I don't think I can read another plaque. Yeah. So now I propose that we go take the Chippy Chippy train to see the city. All right, let's do it. So we got a ticket for the Chippy train. Uh, it's 60 pesos per person, or if you're a couple, it's 100 pesos total. Um, so we're waiting until four o'clock or about a half hour or so. So we're killing some time, having a beer at the Grand Cafe.
after our ride on the Chippy Chippy train, we were starting to get a bit hungry. So we headed over here to Ambori Jane and then we had a nice little dinner. Yeah, uh, we started out with the esquites con tuitano, and then I got a drink that was uh, the ahumado, which was pineapple and mezcal. I don't remember what mine was called, but it also had mezcal and it had habanero and a bunch of cilantro. Yeah, very fresh, good drink. Uh, then we also got the uh, Chuck tacos uh, that had tuitano mm -hmm. on them as well. And we got a hamburger uh, that was ground pecanha mm -hmm. uh, that had cheese and caramelized That's onions really on it. Yeah, the bun was a nice brioche uh, and the fries were super crispy and well seasoned. Um, overall, definitely enjoyed the place. It was a good price. And I don't know if you can see behind us now, but it is on this beautiful street that is lined with a bunch of cafes and has pretty lights and the municipal palace is behind us now. It is starting to get a little bit dark, so I think we are going to head back to our Airbnb because we have had a long day and we're gonna have an early start tomorrow. So today we're starting out back at the Municipal Palace because they have a couple of museums inside. Yeah, those museums are part of that 13 museum ticket and we are gonna try to see them all. Uh, right now it is a bit cloudy. We are hoping that it clears up later because we wanna take the Teleferico up to the hill. Uh, there are a couple uh, museums at the top of that. So fingers crossed. We just finished up the two museums, so we're getting a little bit hungry, so we're gonna get something to eat. Yeah, we decided that we were gonna stop by one of the recommendations by our Airbnb host. We enjoyed those uh, Pierna sandwiches so much yesterday, we're gonna try a different version of them. So we finished up our brunch. It was pretty good, but it wasn't as good as the sandwiches we had yesterday. Uh, Georgia got the media noche, which had a sweet bread and uh, some beans on it, along with the uh, Pierna and I got the Terranza, uh, which had avocado and uh, tomato on it, along with the Pierna as well. Um, kind of lacking in the meat department, but they were still pretty good. Yeah, uh, after that, because we were still hungry because they were so small, um, we got the tostadas, which were much better. They had quite a bit of meat on them. And then uh, we put a bunch of their salsa matcha on it. Mm -hmm. And salsa matcha is really popular in this area. Generally, it's like ground uh, sesame seeds as well as peanuts and then some dried chilies uh, with oil. And theirs was absolutely mm -hmm. fantastic. So I would recommend the restaurant just for the salsa matcha. Uh, now we have walked about 10 minutes to the Ex Convento de San Jose. We're going to go check out the church first, and then we'll walk around the Ex Convento. Wow, so that ex convento was huge. I mean, if you went in there and you didn't have a map, you might actually get lost. It was probably one of the bigger ones we've ever been to. Yeah, uh, I think it took us like an hour and a half. Yeah. 
Um, unfortunately, the skies are not clearing up, so we're gonna save the Teleferico till tomorrow. Uh, we decided to take a cab the couple of kilometers to the Polyforum, um, which is the building behind us now. Um, it is a really beautiful park. They have a lot of statues. They have a carousel. And apparently the Polyforum itself used to be an ins uh, uh, insane asylum that they've now turned into some museums. So we're gonna go check it out. The two museums here are the Francisco Gobolando Soler, which is dedicated to the beloved Mexican cartoonist. We skipped this one, although we know that almost every Mexican can sing his songs by heart. And the other museum was Mier y Pisado, which is dedicated to the couple who built the Polyform. Additionally, the building is absolutely packed with restaurants, bars, and cafes. We decided to end the day with a couple of delicious beverages. So we finally have a bright and sunny day, so we have gotten up nice and early and come down to the Teleferico. So when you come here, there's gonna be two lines. The one at the bottom of the stairs, you don't wanna get in that line at first. You wanna go up to the ticket office and buy your tickets first. So uh, tickets are 100 pesos per person, and it looks like they give you a two hour window to, to when you go up there. So we have a 11 a.m. ticket, and we have to come back down at one. And right now it's about 9.45, so we got about an hour and 15 minutes to kill. So we made it to the top of Cerro de Borrego. Uh, up here, there are the last two museums that are on our ticket, so we are gonna go check those out, as well as, of course, appreciate the view. And apparently included with your ticket is the option to go out on their glass uh, bridge, so we're gonna do that next. Unfortunately, even though we did pick a sunny day, it is still kind of hazy. Yeah. Um, it kind of looks like the Smoky Mountains in North Carolina or Tennessee, where you kind of have that haze out in the distance.
So the museums at the top were kind of meh, they're kind of small, uh, but I definitely recommend the Crystal Walkway and the Tower to go see the mountain. Yeah, very cool. We could see the Pico de Orizaba in the distance, uh, even though there was that little bit of haze, so that was cool. Another thing to know is that uh, the time on your ticket to go up is very important. They don't want you to get in line more than 30 minutes before, uh, but if you are two people, there's a good chance you'll get pulled in line ahead of everybody else. We did. We skipped a ton of people. Um, and then when you're ready to come back down, they don't care what time is on your ticket. There was like almost no line, and we were able to get right on. So we decided to take a cab for 60 pesos to Tobogon de la Montaña. Uh, this little alpine roller coaster is super cool. I mm -hmm. definitely recommend it. It was... Uh, 90 pesos per person. So not a bad deal. The ride is pretty quick, but it is definitely fun. Um, you can ride two people in a toboggan or you can ride separate. We decided to ride separate. Um, and there are brakes. So if you don't like the ride too intense, you can slow yourself down. Um, up on this side of town, there is also Casa Vegas. Uh, as well as the planetarium and uh, I believe like a little eco park with dinosaurs. So we're gonna go and check it all out. So interest in Casa Vegas was 100 pesos per person. Uh, and that does include um, the Torture Museum, the Tierra Lesa, uh, as well as archery and axe throwing, which both of those are right behind us. So we're going to do this now. So 
after going and seeing all the dinosaurs and dragons that they have, the sun was starting to get a little intense, so we stopped in their little beer garden to get us a couple cold cervezas. We just got tickets to the planetarium behind us, which you can access from Casa Vegas. Yeah, we got tickets to the two o'clock show. I think there was a 12, a two, a four, and a six. Uh, and those tickets, I believe, were 80 pesos each. So we finished up in the planetarium. We started with uh, kind of a 3D movie under the dome. Uh, then they took us to a room where we all get to wear VR headsets. That was really cool. Uh, that was, it was pretty neat. I haven't uh, had a VR headset on before, so it was a cool experience. And then we went up the stairs and we were able to look at the sun through a telescope that had a bunch of filters. So that was pretty neat. But now I think we're gonna do the torture museum and then we have to find something to eat. It's like three o'clock and we haven't eaten all day. <laughs> So I think we've done just about everything there is to do here at Casa Vegas, except for the Terra Lisa, but the line is a little too long. Yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and head back to our Airbnb. We do have a little bit more of the river walk to do, so I think we're gonna get the cab to drop us off like past it so we can walk down. I think there are some tigers and some hippos uh, that we didn't get to see. So we're gonna do that, and I think that is a wrap uh, on Oisaba, because tomorrow we are heading to another Pueblo Mexico. This was our Airbnb for the past week in Orizaba. We were able to park the Jeep behind there. You can see we have a beautiful little courtyard here. Come through the front door, we had a nice big couch, big TV. No AC in this house, but it doesn't need it most of the year. Got a big dining room table here, and then kitchen here. Interesting foosball table. Um, we had a little burner stove here and then a little toaster oven. See there was the dining room. The host left a bunch of uh, bananas and limes and lemons and oranges, snacks, teas, coffees. It was very well um, stocked. You can see we also got two full garifones there. Come down this little hall and this was the room that David edited videos in. We charged things, we worked out in. There's one bathroom. You can see it's been nicely remodeled, big shower, and a nice little sink area. Now this hall was just an extra bedroom. We just stored a few things in here. And then this was the master bedroom, big king size bed, firm but comfortable. And we got two nightstands, and then there was plenty of closet space here. We enjoyed our stay, location was very walkable, host was excellent. We want to say a very special thank you to our Airbnb hosts, Jose and Esther, who really made our trip to Orizaba special. Muchisimas gracias. Now for that cost breakdown. 
For seven nights, that Airbnb cost us $389. We spent $206 on transportation, $71 on entertainment, $47 at bars and on alcohol, $416 at restaurants, just $50 on groceries. I didn't really cook here. We spent $24 on utilities. That was two Telcel recharges and just $10 on personal care. That grand total, $1,213 or $173 per day. Thanks for watching. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them down below. If you haven't already, check out last week's video where we visit the nearby Pueblo Magico of Cosca Matepec de Bravo.